So, good morning, everybody. Uh, it's great uh, to see you here, both the, the people from Israel, the, the native Israelis, and uh, all the guests. And two things that I want to say, I'm uh, the CTO, I love what I'm doing. And I also talked a bit before about innovation and other people, that's what I do for a living, and it's fun. Uh, and to me, innovation, it's not just having great ideas, but uh, making sure that all those great ideas turn into, in, into products that real people are using. That, for me, is innovation, and of course, business success. So, without any further ado, ah, okay, it's you. Uh, let's, let's, let's start. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to start with cyber, cyber crime. And it's not news that almost every week, we, or every day, we hear, about, we hear about a new cyber attack. And this is just few attacks that happened in the last two years. And obviously, I don't expect you to remember all of them. But let's focus on some of the most recent ones. Uh, this, was, um, uh, this was a representative, actually, attack on, uh, happened to be on British Airways. Uh, but uh, someone installed there a very tiny piece of code, which resulted in the breach of 380,000 uh, records of British uh, Airways uh, customers. Now, it's not a, sm a big number relative to millions, but uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, each record like this is worth a lot of money in the underworld. Why? Because obviously the people that are use uh, uh, British Airways, especially the top ones, um, have a lot of money in their accounts. Now, uh, this is another interesting thing because we see that uh, in, in the past it was very easy to uh, just steal uh, um, um, credit cards and use them, and this was called card present. Uh, attacks. However, in recent years, with all the uh, f um, with all the advance in the credit card that you have, a cheap, etc., it's become much more difficult to do a card present attack. Therefore, most of the attacks are now a card not present, which means that the people are still. I mean, the tips are stealing your credentials that they can use in card not present, internet, etc. There are many attacks like this. And by the way, the price of the card not present credentials rise to the ceiling. What there is ob obviously, as you know, there is a, a, the, under, the, the, the underground, the underworld. It's, it's a mirror image of the immediate, uh, of, of the legitimate industry. They have their developers, they have their people that are dealing with the, the marketing, franchise, etc. And obviously, there is a lot of uh, a very rich uh, uh, commercial uh, scene where people are, uh, uh, dealing with that. Uh, okay, another. Um, oh no, what happened? Okay, so another attack. Uh, everything is being attacked, and again, the the the, the criminals are are, are very. Uh, they're not only they're very technolo technological savvy, they're very economical and business savvy. They're very shrewd businessmen. So obviously, like body building, which happens few months ago in January, uh, sorry, in February, still a lot of records. Uh, another interesting attack is uh, actually happened only two weeks ago, Baltimore, with the ransomware. The whole city was completely shut down. And just an attack that happened three days ago, and this is one of the most uh, big, the biggest attack, uh, but it will create its record only for uh, weeks because someone will uh, out of that. As the first American finance uh, uh, disclosed that the, uh, uh, millions, hundreds of millions of records of their um, customers were um, stolen. So, and, and this continue and continue, why? Because it's, it's very lucrative and it's very, um, it's very, it's, it's very um, beneficial for the people who do it and don't get caught, and many of them don't get caught. Okay, uh, so until now what we saw, we saw attacks on data. This is uh, data or money. This is, this is where most of the attacks happen uh, uh, so far. Uh, in, in the last two, th two years, we started to also see attack of things, except, uh, especially with the proliferation of Internet of Things. Okay, so what the fish and tanks and baby monitors and refrigerators have in common? Uh, the fact that there are small computers and they are connected to the Internet, and this is obviously IoT. Okay, so uh, there were a few 
famous attacks recently. Uh, I'm going to talk of one of uh, um, my favorite attacks. Uh, you know, when you attack IoT, you can attack the devices, you can attack the, the center of control, etc. It's really want what, you, what is your goal as a criminal. And sometimes you want to just leverage the IoT as a vector of entry to the corporate. And that was the attack with uh, the famous attack with the uh, uh, fish tank in one of the biggest casinos in, in Los Angeles. What happened, they had a, a, a really amazing, amazing um, uh, fish tank there. And, um, and a fish tank has a small application uh, that could, disp that could uh, um, um, dispose the, the food for the fish remotely because nobody wants really to go to the fish tank. But this remote this remote access was connected also to the corporate network. Obviously, nobody thought that the fish has anything to hide or any interesting data, so nobody thought to put any uh, uh, means of, uh, a, um, uh, of security there, which was, of course, an error. So someone leveraged the, uh, the, the, that uh, device uh, for fish disposing food, and from that, they were able to go to the corporate network, because it was connected to the corporate network, lateral movement, and got to the database of all the, uh, all the customers of the casino, and they stole it. Uh, okay, and, and uh, obviously most of you remember the Mirai attack, that was the biggest DDoS attack that leveraged IoT, that, all, that happens about uh, a little bit over a year ago. Uh, another interesting attack that I want to um, uh, talk about it, and, and that shows innovation. Okay, innovation not of the uh, good community, community which sits here, but on the very active underground community. Okay, so this this is called Med IoT, and Med IoT actually Med is the um, a manipulation manipulation of demand of IoT, and it's actually attacking the power grid. Now, most of the attacks on power grid, like, oh, you remember there was a, a power failure in Brazil or in the U.S. for, for, many, uh, for many days, usually what they attacked, they attacked the, the grid itself, okay? What is um, innovative, talking about innovation, uh, what is innovating in this attack is that the, uh, it's, it's the first time that they attack it through the devices. What did they do there, the, the criminals? They installed a malware there that controls the uh, voltage uh, of the voltage of the uh, devices. And what happened, if, if it, apparently, if at one point you increase the, 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 the power demand from uh, many, many devices or decrease it at the same time, the power grid cannot uh, handle it. Uh, so that, again, and, and that's, uh, again, showed the innovation, and it will continue. They are very, very innovative, very tech-savvy. That's why you, we, you, have to be one step ahead of them. Okay, so uh, we talked about, uh, just a little bit uh, in, in numbers, uh, so, uh, the, the, and, and this keeps coming up. Uh, in the cost of uh, breach, when I started following that, which was uh, uh, more than 10 years ago, was less than 1 uh, million. Now in the US, it's 17 million, the cost of the average breach. If we talk about uh, how long uh, it takes before an APT attack, advanced persistent attack, that, uh, attack that goes into your uh, um, corporate network before it gets uh, found, now it's 99 days. By the way, here we improved. It used to, do, to be 250 days. We, I mean the, the security community. Uh, the, 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 the total damage from cybercrime is going up, and now it's, it, it's not now, it's going to be, it's predicted that it's going to be in 2022, eight trillion dollars. It's just, for me at least, it's impossible to, ima to imagine such a huge number. Another interesting, uh, um, another interesting and less known fact is that the, the, the long term, not just the, the short term uh, effect of cybercrime on the economy, but also the long term effect. Because uh, it turned out in a, re in a recent research that 20% of customers, that their company experienced um, um, uh, an attack, will not return to this company. 
which means that there is a long-term effect in uh, reputation. Okay, um, trends in cybercrime. So it's interesting to, to know that, uh, and it's probably not uh, a surprise, that for the past seven years, there is the um, director of national, uh, of national security in the US, and every year they publish a report. And they say, what is the biggest threat to the US? For the first 70 years, since 1945, it was nuclear power. Not surprising. Okay? The first time for, in 2018, for number one, is cyber. Okay? And cyber, it's not just the technological, but also all the effects to the economy, to the society, etc. And nuke went only to number two, terrorism to number three. Another interesting, and it's especially for you as the developers uh, community and, and the communities in general, is what are the next frontier? Okay, so we talked about breaching data, we talked about breaching th things, but the next things is really breaching uh, um, first reality. And when I'm talking about breaching reality, it's not fake news. Fake news is just a simple thing of telling a lie about something that didn't happen, okay? Fake reality, is much more scary. It's creating really an alternate, alternative reality, okay? And, and think about it, like right now we have so many cameras and, and if a killer or, or a thief is um, caught in one of the security cameras, it's obviously admit, admissible in the court of law. But now it's becoming easy to inject pictures, footage into those cameras. So, it's really becoming a reality because if someone saw you stealing or killing, this is the reality. But it's not reality, it's fake reality. Or can, you can think what happened if uh, uh, the president of the US or the president of uh, um, um, UK, before she left, uh, is meeting with someone uh, that she's not supposed to meet and this picture is, is transferred all over the world. Do you know if it's the real picture or the fake picture? The next thing is also breaching humans, okay? So uh, I'm, I'm not just talking about pacemaker and insulin pump, which is, again, also controlled by the internet, and if you want to hurt someone, you can definitely do an attack on them via the internet. But I'm also talking about simpler things, like we are handling, well, this is actually harmless, but uh, we are having our... Uh, telephones and our uh, uh, watches that control our wearable uh, devices. And you can do a lot of damage with them, especially if you follow them very, uh, um, um, very devoutly. Okay? So that is going to be the next, uh, the next frontier, and, and again, without even installing a chip in your brain. Okay, uh, so we saw the trends. And now I want to talk about the opportunities and the opportunities to, and, and what do we have to, as the good guys, and again, I don't want to get into the philosophy who is the good guys or on the bad guys, but let's assume for now that the good guys are the ones that, that, are, that are developing the, all the defense systems in order to, uh, uh, in order to stop all those criminals. Okay? And why the cloud is such an important part of that. So first of all, we talked about the threats, but this is how, your typical, how a typical enterprise looks like. It's not the cozy um, on-prem environment that we used to have in the past. By definition, your company, if, you're, if, if you want to leverage all the, uh, all the advantages that this open world has to offer you, it's going to be part in the cloud. It's going to have that part of uh, in SaaS, supply chain, which is distributed. So how it usually look? Now, this is a nice, if, if, if you would throw it to a CISO 10 years ago, they think that we are totally crazy and this is a nightmare. But this is how it looks, okay? And given with all the threats that uh, we had before, it's becoming much more difficult to defend such an unpredictable, dynamic, and distributed uh, environment. And uh, before I say, I, I say why the cloud, I still want to say that there is a lot of fear from the cloud. And if you will ask the server, the, 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 and if you ask the, um, 
average person, they'll say, oh, on-prem is so much important if I want to, uh, pro to protect my assets. So first of all, don't confuse me with the facts. Most of the attacks that happen, happen on the on-prem. But that's not the only reason. The only reason, the, 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 and I'll get into the reason, but before that, let me focus on the concerns from the, the cloud. Okay? So the first, the first concern is obviously management and visibility. It's very complex, like we saw before, because everything is distributed, everything is dynamic. You, one day you have three uh, VMs on the cloud, the next day you might have 100. It's, it's elastic, it's, it's, it's really, really very elusive. Uh, it's really also very difficult to understand what we have in the cloud and the management sometimes it's complex, etc. Uh, and of course, the attacks are continue to grow and, uh, and also uh, cloud-specific attacks, okay? Uh, so all these concerns, if we want to make sure that we leverage what we have in the cloud, we have to address them. So let's look at several of the things, okay? So cloud and AI, now to me, cloud and AI, and it's not, uh, a, a, and it's not uh, a coincidence that uh, I'm the CTO of the cloud and AI security, because I see cloud and AI going hand by hand. What you can do with an AI on the cloud, you cannot do on AI on the on-premise, uh, or, or in a closed environment. Okay? And that's why, to me, they are going together. But let's see of some, of the th some of the advantages that the cloud enable you in this fight. And again, it's a fight, it's a war. It's a war against the, the, the criminals that are, that, are, that are trying to steal, that are trying to change, that are trying to do all the things that we would like to avoid. Okay. Uh, so first of all, as I, as I said, we need to provide visibility. A good cloud has, and they have, and, and, and we and they, cloud providers has the ability to give you the visibility of the things that you have, just take care of it. So first of all, to, to solve the visibility issue. The second thing uh, is to make sure that you leverage the cloud, which sees a lot of information, and collect a lot of this data, and analyze it from all sources, not only security data. I'll give you an example. Okay? Um, in the cloud, and if you keep your uh, uh, data in the cloud, um, it, it's very easy to access, for example, your HR or travel uh, system if they happen to be in the cloud. Now, uh, if someone, right now in Tel Aviv, right, but most of the time, I'm, not most of the time, at least 50% uh, uh, of, of my um, stay is in Redmond, because Redmond is where the Galactic Hub where the, uh, where the headquarters of Microsoft, and I'm there a lot, okay? So let's say that today, and I have an office there as well. So let's say that today, uh, someone who's, who's posing as Michal, okay, is trying to go into my account in the Redmond office. And they have the perfect, they, they stole all my, somehow they stole all my credentials, somehow, okay? It's difficult, but some, let's say that someone, Somehow they did it. But if the security system knows how to access the travel, oh, and Michal is actually not in Redmond today. She is in Tel Aviv. She traveled to Tel Aviv. So that's clear that this is a, um, that, that this is a criminal attack. Okay? So that's why the collective data and all the system, not just the security, but your operational system are extremely important. And in the cloud, it's very easy to connect them. Uh, the next thing, is uh, um, it, it's also cheaper to do it long term, but I will not get into it. Uh, and uh, another thing is that you can um, uh, you, you can connect a lot of the things together. And uh, let me focus off on the last thing, which is the cloud effect. So a lot of the things you can say, oh, you can do it also in the on-prem. Yes, you can do it but it's difficult. What we really you cannot do in, in, in the on-prem, and you can do only in the cloud, is what I, call the, what I call the, it's a variety of features which I call the cloud effect. And let me just give you one example, but there are many more that I'm happy to talk with you afterwards. Okay? So one thing which is really unique to the cloud, okay? So let's say we, we discover, you know, in the cloud, and, and the cloud providers have many tenants, okay? Let's say that we discovered an attack on one tenant, and we marked the digital fingerprints of this attacker. Now, this attacker 
will now attempt to attack more tenants. However, because we identified his or her digital fingerprints, we will instantly, in real time, now stop the attack to the rest of the tenant. Now, you cannot do it, the, the, the media, the real-time sharing, you really cannot do it in, in the on-prem. Now, to me, and, and not only to me, we, we think we almost prove it even mathematically, um, for the interested party, I can show it, uh, is that uh, it, it's not only if you put your data only in the cloud, it's more secure. That's no-brainer. But what is really important to understand that, that security systems that are developed in the cloud in order to protect on-prem, in other words, we're talking about hybrid system, you get a much better security in the cloud because you can leverage all the things that I, that I saw before, and that's why the on-prem is benefiting as well. Is, now, I think that in five years, 90% of the, what we do will be in the cloud, but let's say that I'm wrong, and it's going to be 10 years, so we are going to live in a, a, a hybrid world for a long time. Still, to consume security analytics systems that are in the cloud, that protects your hybrid environment, both their on-prem cloud and other cloud, this is the way to go. Okay. Um, uh, I, coming from Microsoft, I just want to give you some numbers of, of uh, just now to put some color on that, okay? So again, it's not only Microsoft, other cloud providers can do it as well, uh, if they focus on security, but let's look at, at the numbers, okay? So I think the numbers are quite impressive, okay? So uh, we have 500 million uh, active users, okay? We have 18 billion, okay, Microsoft uh, accounts that are authenticated every day. This is a daily, uh, this is the daily uh, numbers. We have uh, 150 million uh, attempts to um, uh, fake uh, identity that you do every, every day. And of course, we stop. 37 million new threats every day. So these numbers on a daily, okay, on a daily, thanks, on a daily, uh, 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 on, on a daily uh, basis, all of it goes in on, uh, uh, into our AI system. And as you know, uh, what's machine learning is really leverage the data in our in order to pre make prediction to the future. Now, predictions from the future is difficult especially as Neil Bohr said, okay? But the more data you have, and the more quali uh, uh, qualitative data you have, you can make a, a better prediction. Your AI system can make a better prediction. And the cloud with these numbers give us the ability to do very exact predictions because one of the biggest uh, challenges of computer, of uh, security system is not, uh, uh, is not only to detect the, um, uh, the threats and to handle them, but to make sure that the false positive is very low, because, it, because otherwise it's crying wolf-wolf and nobody will, will take you seriously. That's why the big data enable us not only to grow up very high in detection, but to go very slow, I mean, but to go very low on false positive, and that's what makes it very effective in the cloud. Okay, so let's continue. And just to summarize, so a new art of war is needed, and, and that art of war, we need to leverage intelligence very highly. We need to leverage machine learning and analytics and partnership. And this is a segue to why communities are so important. Partnership between vendors, partnership between communities. Because like in any war, and as I said already, it's a war, coalition is very important. It cannot be won by itself. And, and the cloud, powered by the cloud, makes it really the way to go. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is why communities? Don't answer, it's obviously a rhetoric question. Okay. So communities is very important, okay? as I said. Uh, and I want to talk about a few of the things that we are doing uh, uh, specific in Microsoft in order to make sure that we, um, uh, that, that we leverage this huge power of communities in order to make sure we build better security systems. Okay? So the first thing is, is API. 
Okay. Uh, almost all of our products have API access, REST API, etc., that you can uh, uh, leverage and increase them. Because no matter what good work we do, you, by, if you can expand them by open source or by uh, uh, adding to it, it will be better. We also have the Microsoft Graph API, which is uh, uh, something relatively new, which we expose to you a lot of the threats that we internally found. So not only you can uh, leverage uh, API, but you can also leverage the finding and therefore buy, uh, build a better uh, solution. Another thing, the products that uh, uh, we developed are easily expandable. The most, uh, the most recent one, uh, Sentinel, by, by the way, which is one of my babies, uh, I, in, I initiated it. And uh, also Azure Security Center is another baby, but older one. And uh, Sentinel is not only is a, 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 is a great analytics and, and new generation sim in the cloud, but it's also ex expandable. And it adds you easily to add more and more components that you can develop by yourself and uh, make sure that uh, it um, um, customers to your environment, to, to the specific problem that you want to, uh, to solve. And of course, GitHub, with the, uh, with the purchase of GitHub, uh, and it's connected now to all our products, so you can leverage GitHub in order to, to, to store, share, and uh, everything that, that you develop, make sure that you hook to the right communities and therefore buy the better, uh, build a better security solution. So all of it together uh, gives you an ecosystem uh, that it's very easy. Okay, so uh, okay, what I want to actually end this uh, uh, talk and also maybe open it to questions. Uh, I want, um, because it's OSAP, because you guys are also looking on the next frontier, not only from technology, but what you should contribute. So I want to give you a few ideas. So uh, the first thing is the edge computing. I know you guys are already looking at IoT, and OSAP is talking about IoT edge, etc. but edge computing is much more than IoT. It's really leveraging the control that you can get from the cloud, but make the edge in the on-prem, again, with close connection to the cloud, much more intelligent. Okay? So it's, it's really uh, uh, optimizing the fact that we have a strong edge in the on-prem, constantly connected to, to the cloud, but can be controlled the level of independence and uh, sharing, and how do you really do it correctly? Okay. So we have a lot of ideas, but I think that we already just scratch the, uh, the tip of the iceberg. And, and I think it's, it's a great, uh, and it's a great challenge for you, this community, in order to think about solution, because there's a lot of problems there that are, um, unique to this situation, it's not really just cloud, it's not really just on-prem, it's not really just I IoT, and you have to, deep, to, to go deep dive into it, and you will, sh hopefully, you will have a lot of great ideas. The second interesting thing is functions, and, and functions and serverless, many, and, and Lambda in AWS, again, it's not only from Microsoft, it's um, securing Lambda, both on the attacks and, 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 and serverless and functions, both of the attacks and also the way you secure it, it's different than you secure VM. It's different than you secure just SaaS, even containers, okay? So it's a lot of research there that still need to be done. And, and again, another opportunity for this community to go deep and, um, and, and help and be innovative. And the last thing is the API economy. Uh, we all know about WAF, Web Application Firewall, and all those uh, older generation protection. It's not enough, because right now everything is so focused on the application, on the, on the API. So if you just leverage the infrastructure, the um, uh, way of the past to, 
to, to look at gateways, to look at uh, uh, proxy, etc., it's not enough. You have to be really focused on the API economy, API management, and this again, a new frontier, and this again, something that uh, generates a lot of uh, new ideas, and that's why I, I would like uh, to make sure that we get help from you guys. Um, okay, so I try to do it very fast. Do we have time for uh, two, minutes. two minutes? Okay, so any questions that... Uh, happy to answer any questions now or later. Hello, hello, there we go. Thank you for that. Um, one thing that, that really resonated with me uh, that you mentioned earlier on um, and then elaborated on a bit was this idea of collecting all of the data and being able to apply AI to detect threats in your environment. And the example you gave is, let's say you're not in Redmond, um, being able to pull data from your travel and all of that. Correct. So one thing I, I wonder though is that uh, the, the current state of being able to detect threats is already lagging behind, you know, 99 days or so to detect an, an APT in your environment and all of these other analytics that are right there in front of us but we're not leveraging. What is that kind of middle point between where we, the sad place where we are today and that ideal place where we're actually able to use AI to ingest and analyze all of that data? So what is that kind of that practical okay. middle ground? I think I got the questions, so I'll try to help it. So first of all, just about the 99 dates, okay, that the average APT exists in the corporate network, okay? The fact that it exists there, okay, is bad, but this is not the worst. The worst is when they get to the holy grail, and for them, the holy grail is what they attempted, because the, the, to penetrate the networking is just a means to an end. You have to understand what they were actually after, okay? Now, if... Uh, so, and, and uh, the success of the defense is if we stop them, not, of course, we want to stop the penetration, but this is almost impossible. If they really want to penetrate, they will, okay? In, in the same way that if a very um, successful uh, thief, no matter how your castle is closed, they will be able to penetrate your castle, okay? The important thing is that you will stop them before they actually get to their Rembrandt, or to Dali, or whatever is stored in you, or whatever they want to store, okay? And that's exactly the, the, uh, why the continuous monitoring of what's happening inside your network and inside your uh, um, enterprise is important, okay? So let's say that there was even uh, already an APT, which means it exists in my organization undetected for, let's say, 98 days. But what we really want, they wanted to steal my credentials. And if at that point, when they made the mistake, and they accessed the, uh, the, the and, and because we accessed the travel system, we were able to stop it, at that point, we would discover it, and we stop the whole attack, okay? So that's why it's extremely important. Did I answer the question? Okay. I think we don't have more time, so. Okay. One more question, or no? Um, we have. Sorry, so we, we don't have any more time, but we can uh, get questions at the okay. coffee break that's coming right now. 